I think uh, it's very important to evaluate the digestibility of nutrients, especially of for products, because uh, it's important not only to formulate uh, uh, adequate, adequately the the diet to promote a, a, a good growth performance of pigs, but nowadays it's also very important when we think about the, the sustainability of pig production. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Urbano Ruiz, a professor at the University of Sao Paulo. So, Urbano, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Oh, certainly. Firstly, thank you, Clayton, for the, the invitation. Uh, my name is Urbano. I'm a professor in, in Brazil. Uh, I used to be a professor at Sao Paulo State University from 2007 to 2014. And from 2015 to now, I, I have been working at University of Sao Paulo in the Luiz Queiroz College of Agriculture, which is in the city of Piracicaba in the state of Sao Paulo. We are in the southeast of Brazil. Uh, I am, as I told you, I am a, I'm a professor and I work with swine nutrition and feeding here. And I am an agronomist. I graduated at, at this university. And I did my master's and doctor degrees in animal science. Awesome. So let's talk about some of the work that you and your lab have done with nutrient variability and different feedstuffs. So what all has your lab found in terms of variability and how important is it to reevaluate your ingredients? Uh, I think uh, it's very important to evaluate the digestibility of nutrients, especially of for products because uh, it's important not only to formulate uh, uh, adequ adequately the, the diet to promote a, a, a good growth performance of pigs, but nowadays it's also very important when we think about the, the sustainability of pig production. So if we, we find ways to improve the nutrient digestibility of nutrients and energy of feed ingredients. We can use this information to uh, formulate better diets and reduce, for instance, the, the excretion of nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, and the excretion of residues in general that will also contribute to the uh, environment food footprint of pig production. So uh, there are uh, different ways of achieving these goals, such as uh, using feed processing techniques, as steam pelleting, uh, uh, as extrusion of, of feed ingredients, and also uh, investigating the, the capacity of pigs of different aids in digest and absorb the nutrients of feedstuffs. Uh, today, when we formulate a diet, we use the same nutritional values for the diet formulation of piglets or of growing, finishing piglets and also for the sow. And uh, we know that the, as the animal grows, uh, uh, their capacity in digesting the, the nutrients changes. So in, in general, the, the animal will be more efficient in digesting the, the ingredients as, uh, uh, as he, he grows. So we, we did some trials investigating that, uh, investigating uh, uh, the effect of age of pigs on nutrients and energy digestibility. For instance, when we consider energy, it's well established that there is a, a, an important difference in energy values of, uh, mm -hmm. of ingredients according to the age of the, the animal. And some feeding tables 
like the, the French tables or the, the Brazilian tables consider this difference. But when we think about amino acids or minerals, uh, the, the tables have just one value for each ingredient. And this uh, same value will be used to formulate the diets for all, all the pigs. So that the, the idea behind these studies is to create different nutritional matrices of the feed ingredients according to the, the animal's age. Gotcha. So what all different feed ingredients did you guys really look at and analyze? In, in our most recent uh, study, we evaluated three corn co-products, uh, corn gluten meal, uh, actually two types of corn gluten meal, uh, one with 21% crude protein and the other with 60%, and corn germ meal. And uh, we tested these two ingredients for piglets, around 10 kilograms, for growing pigs with 20 to 30 kilograms, for finishing pigs with 80, and for sows with 160 kilograms. And uh, the results were very interesting. And uh, it, it was nice to, to observe that the difference in the digestibility of nutrients depends uh, not only on the animal's age, but also in the uh, nutrient composition of the feed ingredients. Uh, when we, we evaluated the um, corn gluten meal with 6% crude protein and with very low dietary fiber content, uh, there was clearly a big difference between the extreme ages. Uh, between the, the piglets and the, the sow. Uh, this was very clear. Uh, and uh, the growing pigs and finishing pigs uh, did not differ uh, uh, from the sows and, and from the, the, the piglets. But when we evaluated the other two ingredients that have a, a much higher fiber content, then we, we could uh, found, find the difference in uh, comparing all the, the phases. For instance, the nutrient digestibility uh, of, of uh, piglets was lower than the ones of uh, growing pigs, which were lower than the ones found for the finishing pigs, which were also lower than the <laughs> values found with, with south. So it's, uh, and this difference were not only for energy, as we, we said before, that's something uh, uh, well established, but we found difference for the dif digestibilities of amino acids and also for phos phosphorus. Combining basic science with real world facilities results in swine nutrition programs that deliver impactful bottom line performance. Hubbard Feeds is focused on helping you achieve your goals and make your life easier along the way. Choose a company that can match your appetite for innovation by visiting hubbardfeeds.com forward slash swine research. Well, I believe that's all the time we have, Urbano, but I think there's plenty more to be discussed. Um, so we'll have to continue this conversation in the next episode. But I want to thank you for coming on the show for this episode. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.